Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. This is Love Your Work Life, episode 86. Today I'm going to teach you four things that you can do to get out of your current work-life situation. And I'm saying that kind of diplomatically because I know some of you, as I have been during parts of my career, are in places that just don't feel good. You're either in a toxic environment, you're in a place that is not leveraging everything you have to give, you maybe have gotten passed over for a promotion. If that's you, this episode is for you because I'm going to give you four things you can do that are total game changers to helping you remove yourself from that situation and really find the place that's great for you. And these are techniques that I've used through all of the ups and downs throughout my career. But before I get started with that, I want to share a little bit of my story. So picture this. I'm sitting at a conference table with my peers and our new CEO. And this happens a lot of times with new CEOs. They have new projects, right? They have new strategies, new things that they want us to do. And I've been tasked with launching a brand new product on a super tight timeline. But I am up for the challenge. I love challenges. I'm a little bit of an overachiever. Maybe you are too. But I know that being given this new project, I am 100% in my element. So I do what I do, right? I prepare, I do all the things, I'm organized, and I've got to get buy on from the group. Everyone's aware of the deadline. Everyone understands how crucial it will be to our future business to get this product developed and launched. But there's something happening. Meeting after meeting, the CEO is putting other people ahead of me. I'm not getting the time or attention I need to make that presentation, to get that buy-on. I'm starting to feel ignored. I'm starting to feel undervalued. And on top of that, responsibilities are getting taken away from me. At first, I thought it was so I could focus on this. But now I'm starting to think that there's another agenda in there. And the approach of the CEO, because he's kind of flippant, because he's a little bit of a narcissist, is also starting to create this toxic environment. And I can see the handwriting on the wall. I'm a little bit at my wits end, but I can also see that this is not sustainable. And I'm torn, right? Because I want to make this thing happen. But I just don't know that even if it happens, if I'm going to be safe or happy. But here's what I do know. I know me. I know what I'm capable of. I know how to make career moves. I've been doing it for a long time. I made moves before I had that job. I've done it so many times. And maybe like you, sometimes it was my choice. Sometimes I raised my hand for something. And other times it wasn't my choice. I got laid off. My role got eliminated. But What I know is when I got clear on my value, when I 
looked inward and found the common threads that I could see throughout my career and that I could leverage towards the new thing, I had opportunities. They were available to me and I got the job. I made the pivot. I got the promotion, whatever it was. And I always like to say this, that there's absolutely nothing you can say about your career that will shock or surprise me because I've lived it. My message to you is, if you're living it in the worst possible way, you don't have to do that anymore. Let's talk about how. If you're here, it's because something unwanted is going on in your career. That's why you came to the website. Maybe that's why you follow me on LinkedIn. Whether you need to get out of a toxic place, you're looking to elevate or simply chart a new path, you are in the right place. You've got options, my friend. You absolutely do. You might be feeling stuck and blocked and not seeing anything for yourself, but I'm here to tell you, you have options. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to generate boldness and confidence where you currently have doubt and insecurity. You're going to activate clarity and direction where you might have fog and indecision. And you're going to unlock your potential to create the job, career, and life that you want. And I highlight life here because if you're hating your job, you're hating life. You're probably not showing up the way you want to in other areas of your life because that career job unhappiness just has a way of seeping in. There are four steps to making your career move that I'm going to walk you through in this video. The first one is deciding you're worth it. Next, it's about releasing your past. I know that might sound a little counterintuitive because because isn't your past part of what equips you for your future? We'll get into that. You get to write a new story and I'm going to talk to you about a superpower that you can activate that has served me for a very, very long time. That was the thing that equipped me to make it through the down times and elevate whenever I wanted to. Wherever you find yourself, it's possible to get the job and career you want, but you've got to decide that you're worth it. Until you make that decision, you're just going to stay stuck. You're not going to be able to rewrite anything about your career. You first have to decide that what you want is worth it. Well, how do you do that? There's a little bit of reflection that needs to happen in order for you to move forward in a way that helps you just latch on to your worth in this situation. Here's some things to ask yourself that will help you do it. When was a time you surprised yourself? Maybe you did meet that big challenge. Maybe you did get that relationship solved at work. Maybe you did create connections with clients and customers and you were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Look for those moments in your career. Um, They can be big. They can be small. It doesn't really matter. But I want you to go back and find those times. Next, I want you to think about a time when you stepped up without being asked. We've all done it. We've all volunteered for things. We've all done things that were bigger than what we thought we were capable of in that moment. These are the things to value about yourself. Imagine what it looks like to have a job or career 
you actually want. You probably wanted what you have now at some point, but if you've outgrown it or if it's turned toxic, then going back to your imagination and what it would feel like to get what you want, just like you got what you wanted before, is a really powerful place to put your mind. Next, release the past. Stop looking in the rear view mirror. Sometimes I put it like this. Focus on what you're running towards instead of what you're running away from. Trust me, I get it. There might be a whole lot that you want to run away from. I have been there. But releasing that from your past and focusing on your future is the next step to making this move that I know you want to make. Here's some ideas to help you get there. What's your favorite thing? It's 100% possible to look for the favorite things that you've done in your previous roles and leverage those for your future. What do you want more of? When I made my career pivots, I was looking at what do I want to do more? What are my, these favorite things? What are the things that get me charged up? And if I could put in more of that in my daily work life, what would that stuff be? What do you dread? I know it seems like this is a weird question, but knowing what you don't want can be just as powerful as knowing what you want. And a lot of times when you're dreading something, it's because you're not in your strength zone. And knowing about your strength zones and how to stay in those lanes can be really, really helpful because it's one of the things that gives you clues about what you can do next. Who do you want to be? What a powerful question. When was the last time you asked yourself that question? Who do I want to be? Who do I want to be in this moment? And who do I want to be in my career future, in my next role? Knowing where you've been and being willing to let go is just the start. From there, you create a narrative you can articulate clearly and confidently. It's the accumulation of all your experience and skills. You don't have to leave any of it behind. If it's good and it felt good, you get to take that with you, my friend. It accumulates that value and you get to apply it to your next role and write a new story. It's about making the connections. And what do I mean by that? It's what you already know about yourself. Again, your likes, your dislikes, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. It's about celebrating accomplishments. It's so fascinating to me that many times people have a really hard time seeing the day-to-day -day stuff they're doing as results and accomplishments but it actually is. And when you find them, you want to celebrate them. Our brain loves celebrations. And the more you celebrate, the more you unpack that and find those little golden nuggets of results and accomplishments and celebrate them, the more of them you'll find. And it plays into that superpower as well that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. Finding those common threads. What are the things, what are the behaviors, especially, that have underpinned your success all the way through from role to role? That stuff goes forward with you too. That becomes how you construct your new story. So what do you know today? Well, first of all, I always love starting with writing out an accomplishment you're most proud of and why. 
And we're going to go a little deeper into accomplishments, but I love starting here. And when you write this one out, I don't care if it's a work-related accomplishment or not, because the whole purpose of writing out this accomplishment and feeling good is to turn on higher levels of critical thinking in your brain. And when you have higher levels of critical thinking going on, now you can think about a compliment you got that you knew was true. It felt great, right? When you are feeling good, you're able to find the things that are most relevant in your career and how those are also relevant in your future or give you clues about your capacity to do what you're thinking about doing in your next role. What strength do you add to the team that no one else has? This is so powerful. There is something unique about you that you bring that if it wasn't there, it would be missing. It would be lacking. The team wouldn't be accomplishing as much. It wouldn't feel the same if you weren't there and you weren't adding that strength. Figure out what that is. Now let's talk a little bit deeper about accomplishments. You go through those questions. Now you're thinking at a really high level. You're in an awesome state. So go a little bit deeper. When was a time you solved a challenging situation in a positive way? When was a situation when you persuaded someone or a group to your way of thinking? Did you have a goal or a target you exceeded? And how did you do it? Some keys here are making it detailed and measurable. This will help you so much because it will make you feel good, but in the bigger picture of things, you're going to be able to leverage this in the conversations that you're going to be having in your job search and really going for that next role. What happened? How many? What were the results? Is there a numerical value associated with it? Did you improve something? Was progress being made? Maybe it wasn't a wholesale change, but it was progress. That matters. And now let's talk about these common threads. Common threads are your transferable skills and your natural workplace behaviors. I've listed 30 of them here. I would love for you to stop this video and actually write down a number of these that resonate with you. Are you adaptable? Are you autonomous? Are you a big picture thinker? Are you someone who is very detail oriented? Are you observant? Are you procedural? You have some of these. I know for sure you do. And these are the common threads that have underpinned your success from role to role to role. These are those strength zones I mentioned. When you're analytical and you're in the weeds of the numbers, you're in a flow state, my friend. I imagine time is flying for you. Those are the common threads. Those are your strengths. I want you to find those things and then think about the times that you are in those moments of career happiness. When you're being persistent, when you are imaginative, find those things and write out some examples for yourself of where you have used these strength zones because these things go with you too. And these things offer clues for your next thing in this new story that you're writing for yourself. And now we get to the superpower. Uh, Another Goethe quote, before you can do something, you must first be something. This is the superpower. Well, I'm going to walk you through how this works. It's about the way you think. I love this quote from Earl Nightingale. We become what we think about. 
What is the B for you? What is that promotion? What is that new industry? What is the thing that you want? Think about it. That's how you become it. There's also a Bible proverb that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Your new story is deeply embedded in the way you're thinking about yourself. And the last one is quote by James Allen. Men do not attract that which they want, but that which they are. You can want a promotion, but until you start acting like the promoted person, it won't happen. It will not happen. It's about behaving from your future self. And I learned this early on in my career. I was so fortunate in one of my roles to be introduced to the work of Lou Tice and how our brains work. And it's not woo-woo stuff, my friends. It's actually brain physiology thinking like what you want to be, behaving from your future self is the way to open up your brain to the possibilities in front of you, the actions you need to take. The plan starts to come together. So what are you thinking? How do you feel? What action did you take? How would you respond? This is such a good one from your future self, right? The future you that has the promotion. What are you thinking? How do you feel? What action did you take? How would you respond to the situations and circumstances that are happening? This behaving from my future self is how I landed every one of the 12 promotions I got in my career It's how I was able to bounce back after layoffs and to leverage my value when I knew I needed to make a career change or wanted to make a career change. This is your superpower. I encourage you to start writing out exactly what it's going to be like, who you're going to be when you land that next job, when you get that promotion. Write it out in as much detail as possible. Put your whole imagination into it and add some emotion because when you combine your imagination and your emotion Your brain does not know the difference between that vivid picture you have in your head and reality. And it goes to work making those two things match. Our brains want harmony. They want the outward reality and the inward vision to match. And that's why this is such a superpower because you can actually find the opportunities and create the actions that you need to take to achieve your future self because you're already living it inside your brain. I have one more story to share, but before I do, I want to invite you to my coaching program. I have a big goal. I want to help 100 people leave toxic work environments in the next six months. And you heard me at the beginning. I am up for the challenge, my friend. So if that's you, go to elisashuck-careercoach.com. Check out my 90-day program. Can you imagine how your life is going to be different 90 days from now? And it will. It will be different. I'm going to help you get out of that workplace that's demoralizing, draining, and taking the life right out of you. You know it if it's you. I'm going to help you fix that. 
and help you get out of there. And we're going to do it by validating your strengths. You have some amazing strengths. We talked a little bit about those in the four steps. After we validate your strengths, we're going to set your direction. You're going to have such clarity about that. And then we're going to craft your message on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile. So the logic of your next move makes as much sense to the people that you're approaching as it does to you. And then I'm going to help you seek out the right opportunities so that you are putting yourself out there regularly and easily without a lot of stress. You don't need any more of that. And this is going to be so easy. And then finally, we're going to communicate your value. You're going to be able to go into every single interview with ease and certainty, knowing exactly how to communicate what you can do and how you are the person to help that team solve their problems and achieve their goals. So check it out. Now, one more story. As I said, there's nothing you can say that's going to shock or surprise me about the craziness and the ups and downs of a career. There was another time in my career when I was working harder than I ever worked before. I'm talking six days a week, 12 hours a day. I would leave and go home and call in and see how things were going. It was like it was never ending. I would be there before everybody else and call in at closing time to make sure what our numbers were. Did we do everything we could possibly do? But the results weren't coming. It didn't matter how much time I spent, how many times I changed strategies. It just wasn't happening. And on top of that, this was a career move I had made by choice. It was a promotion that I got that I thought was going to take me to my bigger goal. And so I saw that slipping away too. When the results weren't happening and things were falling apart, then my big goal was starting to feel impossible and getting further and further away. In the end, I got demoted. Business wasn't happening. And in that business, that's what happened. You got demoted and I was going backwards instead of forwards. I felt like a complete failure, but I also started thinking about what I really wanted. And I did something bold right? That boldness, it never left me. I called the head of my old division, the one I left for this promotion. I called and I said, I want to come back. I want to be part of your team again. And you know what he said? He said, it's about time. I don't have time to tell you the story now, but Things went on from there in the best possible way. Isn't it about time for you? Isn't it about time to leave that place that is sucking the life out of you? Isn't it about time to be seen for the value that you truly bring to the table? I think it is. And I hope you think it is too. Where do you want to go? I'm here with you. I'm here for the ride. I believe that whatever is gnawing at you is 100% possible. Your career and where you go from here. Let's talk about it. Let's see if this is right for you. If you like this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. 
On the site, you'll find all the information you need to work with me one-on-one, as well as get access to my courses, Job Search Field Guide, and The Art of Stellar Interviews, so that you can have a job search that's stress-free, gets you in front of people, and most importantly, gets you that job offer. I can't wait to help. I look forward to seeing you there.